Hi everyone, welcome to our new series, Game Development with Pygame. Now this series is going to assume that you have some basic understanding of Python. So if you haven't done our intro series of videos, I recommend you go and do that first, or else some of this will seem a little bit confusing. You also need to make sure you've installed Pygame on your computer. Now the process for doing this is a little bit tricky, and it's different depending on what kind of computer you have. So we've written up some instructions, and if you check the link in the description below, uh, you can follow those directions, make sure Pygame is working before you start on this video, or you won't get very far. Okay, so first of all, what is Pygame? What is it for? Well, Pygame is what's called a game library, which, and a library is just a collection of tools. And these tools happen to be ones that are really helpful for the common things you need to do when you're making games, like showing graphics on the screen and animating it, playing sound, and controlling things using mouse or using the keyboard or a gamepad or whatever you're using for control. Okay, now the most important thing you need to know about a game, or the most important piece that goes into making a game at its heart, is called the game loop. The game loop is what makes the game happen. Every game at its heart has a game loop running. And in that game loop, a certain number of things have to happen. Every frame of the game, these three things are going to happen. The first one is processing input. That's also sometimes called events. That just means anything from outside of your game that happens that you want to pay attention to and have the, the game respond to. like a key getting pressed, or the mouse getting clicked, or a button on the gamepad getting pressed, or whatever the case may be. And the second step is updating the game. That means changing anything that needs to change. If a character on the screen needs to move, we need to figure out where it's supposed to move to. If two things run into each other, we need to figure out what was supposed to happen when they ran into each other. Um, anything that has to change in your game since the last time you updated it. And then the last part, render, is you can think of as drawing. That's draw everything to the screen. So we've figured out what changed, now we have to draw that. If we figured out that the character moved to the right a certain number of pixels, well now we need to draw it that number of pixels to the right. And then I have drew that little picture of a clock there uh, to indicate that we also have to control how fast this happens. Right, and that's normally called FPS, frames per second. So how many times per second does this loop repeat? FPS is important because you don't want your game to run too fast or too slow. You want it to be running at the speed that works for what you have set up. And what's also important is you don't want it to run at a different speed on every different computer that it runs on. Just because someone has a faster computer than you shouldn't mean the game runs faster. So those are the pieces of the game loop, and as we start writing the code, I'll go into more detail about what each one does and how we set it up. Okay, let's get started with Pygame. So I have Adam open here, and I'm going to start by importing Pygame. We're also going to go ahead and import random. Probably going to use that in making a game. And I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call it Pygame template. Don't forget to put .py at the end. Okay, We're going to call this a template because this is going to be the skeleton of a Pygame project. And we're going to reuse that skeleton every time we want to make a new game. So to save us retyping the same things over and over again, we're going to do that. I'm even going to put a little comment up here. So this is a Pygame template skeleton for a new Pygame project. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in our code is we need to tell Pygame to create a window. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of constants for the settings of our window. And I'm just going to say this is going to be D60 and the height will be 480, sort of a mobile window uh, size. And then we're also going to set a constant for our FPS. 
Now the FPS, remember, is how fast your game runs. That stands for frames per second. So it's how many times per second the screen will be updated. And we'll be able to adjust that here depending on what we want our game to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do Pygame init. That initializes Pygame, gets it ready to go. Okay. Now, if you're going to do sound, and you almost always want to do sound in your game, you also need to initialize the mixer. The mixer handles playing all the sound effects and music that you want to have in your game. All right, now we can create the window, and we'll just call it screen. That will be the name of the variable we'll use. And we just say display.setMode, and then what width and height we want that window to be. Um, and then we can also do set caption. And we can have it say whatever we want to say up here at the top of the window. And then the last thing we'll do for setup here is we're going to make the clock, pygame.time.clock. And that's going to be the thing that handles the speed and keeps track of how fast we're going so we can make sure that we're running at the right number of frames per second. OK, we'll go ahead and label some of these things. Initialize pygame and create window. That's what this little chunk of code does. Because now that we have the window, we're ready for the core of our game, which is the game loop. OK, our game loop is going to be a loop. So we want to have a while loop, but we also need a way to stop it. So an easy way to do that is to create a variable called running. And that'll start out being true. And that way, if we ever want to set, if we ever set that running variable to false, the loop will end. So that's how we'll end the game. If whatever happens to end the game, we just set running equal to false and our loop will end. All right, if you recall from the slide earlier, there's three pieces that go into the game loop. There's the process input, also known as events. There is the update, and then there is the draw or render section. Those are the three parts. OK, so I'm actually going to start with the draw section. Now, we don't actually have anything to draw because we don't have any characters or anything in our game. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to fill the screen with a solid color, and that's going to be our whole draw section. And we do that by saying screen.fill, and then in the parentheses, we're going to put what color we want to fill the screen with. But before we can do that, we need to talk a little bit about how you do color in Pygame. On the computer screen, every color can be described as a combination of red, green, and blue light. For example, the secondary colors are the combinations of the two primary colors, red plus green equals yellow, and so on. If you have all three colors mixed together, you get white. And if you have no color at all, that's black. Now to choose what color we want to display, we have to say how much red, how much green, and how much blue we want to go into mixing our color. And we do that by choosing a number between 0 and 255 for each color. Here are some examples. No red, no green, and no blue? Well, that's just black. Maximum red, maximum green, and maximum blue gives you white. And after that, I've listed the individual colors. So for example, green is no red, maximum green, and no blue. And for example, at the bottom, to get cyan, you want to have no red, maximum green, in total, that gives you over 16 million colors to choose from, because 256 times 256 times 256 is a bit more than 16 million. OK, back to our Pygame program. So we want to fill our screen with a color. Now we could put in the parentheses what triplet of colors we wanted. For example, for black, I could put 0, 0, 0. But instead of having to type that every time, a lot of times you want to reuse the colors multiple times. 
So what we'll do is up here at the top after our constants, we're going to define a few useful colors that we can use in our program. So I'll put white. That was 255, 255, 255. We'll put black, 0, 0, 0. And maybe a few other ones that we might want to use um, as we're getting started. Okay. We can always go back and add and remove different ones here depending on which ones we need. But that means we can go down here and just say fill the screen with black. All right, to finish up the drawing section, there's one more thing that we need to explain. We're drawing things to the screen, actually telling the monitor to change the pixels on the display that the person is looking at, is one of the slowest things that the computer can do. And so if you're doing a whole lot of it, it's gonna slow your game down. If you imagine we had a whole bunch of things flying around the screen, you know, uh, um, lots of players, enemies, bullets, clouds, animations, whatever, flying around the screen, there's a lot of things to draw. So every time something moves, we don't wanna individually have to redraw every single thing. If there are a hundred balls bouncing around the screen, we don't want to redraw each one individually. So what we do is we use something called double buffering. And that's just a fancy word for what you can think of as, if you imagine a, a whiteboard that has two sides. And the front side is the display. It's the thing that the person who's looking at the computer sees. And on the back side is where we can do all of our drawing. So if we draw everything on the black si on the back side and we get everything finished, then we're just going to flip that whiteboard over and then the person will see the new frame of the animation, everything is drawn where it's supposed to be. And while they're looking at that, we can be drawing on the back side the next time through the loop, the next frame of the animation and then flip it again. So every time you finish drawing, you need to flip that whiteboard over. And so there's a command for that. And the command is just pygame.display.flip. Okay? That literally means flip that imaginary whiteboard over and show the other side where you've drawn everything. Okay. And you just want to make sure you remember always do this last. This is after drawing everything, flip the display. Okay? If you draw some, if you flip the display, and then you drew something afterwards, no one would ever see it. Okay, so you want to make sure you remember to just do the flip last. And then we're done with the drawing section of our loop. So let's talk about the events. Well, we don't actually have a game yet. Remember, this is just a skeleton, so we don't have controls. We don't know what controls we want to use, the keyboard or the mouse or whatever. But there's one event, one input that we want to make sure that we pay attention to, and that is if somebody clicks the X up in the corner of the window. If they do that, we want the game to close. Right now, if we ran this, you, there's no way to close the window. Clicking on the X will be ignored. So we're gonna add one thing for that, okay? Now, the thing about events is, they could happen at any time, right? If we're going through this loop, and we're in the middle of the update section, and we're running that code, and the player presses the space bar to have their character jump, we don't want to ignore that. And then when it gets around to the event input section again, it says, well, nobody's pressing the space bar now, so it's not going to jump. Because then players are going to feel like they're pressing keys and nothing's happening, right? Because remember, this loop is happening fast. If it's happening 30 frames per second, right, we put 30 FPS, then this loop is going to be 1 30th of a second. So if you press the space bar while you're in the while the computer is doing the update or the draw, you want it to remember that and still make the character jump and, and not discard that key press. So what Pygame does is it groups up all the events and keeps track of them, any ones that have happened since the last time you asked it if there were any events. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little loop here and we're going to go through any events that have happened since the last time we asked if there have been any events. And then we can process any of them so that we don't lose any. Okay. Now the only one that we're going to do is we're going to check for um, closing the window. Okay. Pressing the little X up in the corner. Okay. And that's just going to be an event. Each event has a type. And the event type of the closing the window happens to be pygame.quit in all caps. Okay. Pygame has a whole bunch of events defined with different names. And this is the one for closing the window. So if they do that, if they do press that key, then we can just say running equals false, right? So we want this game loop to end. So this game loop will end. So down here outside of the loop, we can just say pygame.quit, which is the pygame command to terminate the window, end the program, close everything up. Okay, and now we're pretty much finished with our skeleton. We don't have anything to put in the update section because our program doesn't actually have any stuff to update. We're not actually changing things, right? Uh, we don't have any characters to move around on the screen. So we'll leave that part blank. We're drawing the screen, we're filling it with black, we're flipping it over, then we're going back around. Now the one thing we haven't dealt with is that FPS, that speed. So remember we have a constant defined for it, 30, and we have this clock item here, this clock variable that we've created so we can tell Pygame that it should keep track of time. Okay, so what we want to do is inside the loop, we want to keep this running at the right speed. Okay, and we do that by saying clock.tick FPS. So what this does is it tells Pygame however long it took you to process the input, to handle the updates, to draw the stuff on the screen, however long that was. Hopefully it was less than 1 30th of a second. And if it was, then you're going to pause for just long enough to make it so that the whole loop was 1 30th of a second. So if it managed to do this stuff really fast, it'll just wait the rest of that 30th of a second. That way this loop will always run at the same speed. Now, when problems happen, or when a problem starts happening, is if your update, for example, is really slow because you're trying to do too many things, and this update takes so long that the loop takes more than 1 30th of a second, well, then you have something that everybody hates when they play games, something called lag. So, it's important to remember that Pygame will keep it running at the speed you want, but it can't make it go faster if you're trying to do too many things at once. So we won't run into that with our basic games that we get started with, but as your game gets more and more complicated, that starts to be something that you have to think about different strategies for solving and keeping lag from ruining your game. All right, let's go ahead and run it because we're done. So I'm going to press Control R. Remember, it's Alt-R if you're on Windows, for the Atom Runner to run the program. And now there we are. There's, there's my game, my black screen. It's actually running this black screen at 30 frames per second. And all we can do, the only input we can do is press the X on the end, and that should close the program, hopefully. And it did. OK, so we're done with our skeleton. Now we're ready to move on to the next lesson and start making a game.